If you enjoy what you do, you will never work a day in your life. I would advise thinking of YouTube as more of a marathon than a sprint. Think about your first set of videos as an investment in the future for your business. And it's something I would never have considered achievable when I first started out making my simple videos on YouTube. So today's video is for all of you creatives out there, whether you're an artist, an illustrator, filmmaker, motion designer, photographer, musician, singer, actor, actress, games developer, if you make cosplay, if you do crafts, if you do things with code, anyone creative. This is a video about why you should start a YouTube channel. I'm going to talk a little bit about my experiences and some of the benefits that I've had, and also some of the negative things that you might need to consider. So the first point on our list is that when you start to create video content around what you do, you start to improve on your craft. And there are a couple of reasons behind this. First of all, when you're creating content around what you do, you look a lot more closely at the details of how you do things. And this is particularly true if you're explaining specifics around your area of expertise. You also start to get questions and comments from subscribers about what you do, your recommendations, best practice, just things like that in general. And it's not always something that is straightforward that you can answer straight away. Sometimes you have to go away, you have to do some extra homework to find the answers to those questions. And also when you put something out on the internet, eventually you're going to get criticism. We're going to talk a little bit more about that later on, but some of that criticism can be very constructive. It can help you to refine things that you didn't necessarily notice, and this can help you to improve. And all of these things help you to double check what you're talking about and what you do when you create your videos. And this in turn pushes you to continually learn and refine your craft. The second benefit of creating a YouTube channel and YouTube videos is that you become more searchable. This is particularly useful if you sell any creative services or products on the internet. Something that you've probably heard before is that YouTube is the second largest search engine in the world. If you start creating video content talking about what you do and people start searching for that creative skill set, maybe they're looking for an artist, a VFX specialist, a musician or games developer, if they Google that term, Google will then also suggest videos that people can watch about that topic. And if your video comes up and a person watches that video, they can see that you don't only have the expertise in that area, but also that you're passionate about that subject. And then they may go to your website, they might add you on social media, and they might even buy some of your stuff. This leads very nicely into the third point on our list, which is the possibility of business opportunities. Having a set of searchable videos showcasing what you do may attract the attention of corporations or marketers who want sponsored content or even want to hire you for your services. For me as a corporate videographer, it has led to a lot of opportunities filming events, filming interviews and promotional videos in the past. I've literally had organizations or companies contact me out of the blue to ask if I'm available to film their project simply because of having videos on YouTube talking about filmmaking and corporate event videography. Also, as you continually put out regular videos, you build up a track record and people get an idea of what you seem like as a person. Your personality comes through and people watching your content may also feel that they know a little bit more about you. They feel that they can trust you and also that they can work with you as opposed to just contacting someone on a faceless company website. Now, I know we're talking about YouTube today, but if you haven't done so already, don't forget to add yourself to the Kai Creative Facebook and Instagram feeds where you can stay up to date with all of our creative creations. Now, one of the first things that many YouTubers get asked when people find out that they make YouTube videos is how much money do you make on YouTube? And that's the fourth point on our list. For some creatives, money might be a dirty word, but when you start to show up regularly making YouTube videos, providing value, what will eventually happen is that you start to get a weekly check or direct debit into your bank account from YouTube AdSense. You do need to qualify for monetization on YouTube. Currently, you need to have at least 1,000 subscribers and over 4,000 hours of watch time in the last year. But when you start to really build traction on YouTube, you can get a decent amount of income just from YouTube AdSense. However, you don't need to be monetized on YouTube to make money from YouTube. There is a whole ecosystem that works around the platform that allows you to make money. One way is through affiliate links, in particular Amazon, where you can put links to products that you use or review in the description box of your videos. And if someone clicks on that link and buys something within 24 hours of clicking on that link, the buyer won't pay any extra for that item, but Amazon will send you a finder's fee. And actually, Amazon affiliate payments can really stack up at the end of the month and be a pretty amazing cash injection 
And it's not just Amazon. I've got sponsored links in my videos for companies like Envato and Audio. So when I use their software or music, I leave a little affiliate link in the description for any viewers who are interested in that software or music. And if they purchase or sign up, I get a little finder's fee. And it's not just affiliates. Companies might also reach out to you to create sponsored videos. And you come across these all the time when YouTubers incorporate a 30 second to one minute shout out for brands like Squarespace, Skillshare, Storyblocks, etc. And the companies will pay a set amount for those mini ads, depending on your subscribers and reach. And another thing that I've been trying for the last six months or so is creating Skillshare courses, which I can promote directly in my video description boxes and also directly in relevant videos. Again, all part of the YouTube ecosystem that can help creatives generate some revenue. When you create a YouTube channel and start creating content around what you do, you will start to attract like-minded people. And this is the fifth point on our list. You'll start to notice people in the same profession as you comment on your channel, comment on your videos, reach out to you via email or in your DMs. And depending on what you do, the possibility of collaborating becomes very real. And there are numerous creative people that I've had the pleasure to connect with and collaborate with and learn from purely from being on YouTube. And that network can lead to expanding your audience, to work opportunities, and also some really fun experiences, particularly when you're working on passion projects. And there are a few creatives that I connected with on YouTube in 2020 that I'm really looking forward to collaborating with in 2021. One of the things I never anticipated when I started a YouTube channel was the amount of free stuff you can actually get. I remember in the past watching big YouTubers tear open boxes of cool gadgets and tech that they'd just been sent. And actually, as a small YouTuber myself, because I do a lot of camera and tech reviews, I also receive my fair share of free stuff. Now, I actually use the term free quite loosely because a lot of these companies want you to use their products. They want you to create a review about their product, which is essentially a trade of time for said product. But actually, a lot of the kit that I agree to do reviews on are things that I'm genuinely interested in and are useful for my creations. So I'm pretty happy to make a little unbiased review of my thoughts and feelings to receive those pieces of kit for my time to review them. And of course, depending on what your craft is and what you talk about, as long as you continually build a following and make content, you should expect companies to come knocking on your door or sliding into your DMs or personal email with offers of free products and software that they want to send to you in the hope that you will do a review video for them. And of course, whether you choose to or not is up to you. Point number seven on our list is a big one for me, and that is the opportunity I've had to develop my speaking and presentation abilities. For the first part of my creative journey, I was very much behind the camera doing wedding films, corporate events, and promo videos until a YouTuber joined my creative team in late 2017 and said, hey, why don't you make videos about what you do? Kai, why don't you share what you know on YouTube? Those little videography nuggets of knowledge. I remember how difficult it was starting out trying to talk to the camera and how awkward it was watching and listening back to it. It was very uncomfortable to edit. And this actually came across a lot in my earlier videos. And even now, after a few years, it's still not 100% there. Still lots of things to work on and learn. But I definitely feel like I've improved from where I started and hopefully that improvement will continue. And also the idea of vlogging outside used to petrify me. The first time I did it, I got up at 5 a.m. I went to a park and I had a friend with me and I was still really conscious of dog walkers that were around at that time. It was just not comfortable and it's still not 100% comfortable, but it's a lot easier to whip the camera out, do a quick talking point and then move on. And I class all of these things like vlogging and speaking in public and presentation abilities as transferable skills that having a YouTube channel and creating regular content definitely has helped to mold. The next point on our list is that YouTube is a great place to showcase your creative passion projects and let off some creative steam. Now this is particularly beneficial if you do work that doesn't fulfill your creative aspirations. For example, you could be a graphic designer or illustrator who likes drawing manga but you spend all day at your day job working on corporate posters and banners. Having a project where you're creating a manga comic and then creating video content around how you create that comic and then sharing that project with the world is creatively fulfilling. As a video producer myself, I spend a lot of time making corporate videos, which I do enjoy, don't get me wrong, but I also have ideas for short films and other passion projects that I want to create. And I do create some of them and then share them on YouTube, which helps me fulfill my creative aspirations and means that I'm not just using my skill sets for work, but also for fun and my hobbies too. 
The ninth point on our list is freedom. Freedom! And let me explain what I mean by that. For me personally, YouTube and all these little ecosystems around it are starting to earn me a fair amount of revenue. And while it's not enough for me to live on just yet, the possibility of scaling all of these elements up to be able to cover my monthly outgoings is definitely a realistic possibility. And it's something I would never have considered achievable when I first started out making my simple videos on YouTube. And of course, if you're not worried about paying your mortgage, rent or bills, if those things are covered, then what does that mean for a creative type of person? Well, it means more time to create. It means more time with your family. It means more time to do the things that you want to do which means more freedom. And also it means freedom to choose what you want to do in terms of your work. So what freelance projects do you want to work on? What do you want to create? What brands do you want to work with? And that prospect of freedom to choose is a very real thing, all from starting a YouTube channel talking about what I do and then slowly branching out to other ecosystems that work around having YouTube content. So there are definitely some large benefits from starting a YouTube channel, but there are also a few things that you need to consider. As we mentioned earlier, one of those things is negative comments. And there is a difference between constructive feedback, someone who genuinely wants to help you to improve, and then there are just nasty comments. Now, you can't always control what people think and write about your content, but you can control how you react to it. In the early days when someone would leave a particularly nasty comment on one of my videos, I would obsess about it. I would spend a lot of time trying to think of witty, sarcastic comebacks, and maybe you'd get a bit of back and forth with this troll. And really, that just wasted a lot of time playing around and trying to do this back and forth thing. And what I found is the best thing to do is just delete the comment. Forget about it. Use the time and energy that you would have spent obsessing or arguing with that person and put that into scripting and filming your next video. If you're going to get one video out a week, then you need to direct your energies on creating content and also replying to genuine people, people who actually want your help or advice or who have left you constructive feedback. Another thing to consider is your game plan. And I would advise thinking of YouTube as more of a marathon than a sprint. Be in it for the long game. Some people go all out in the beginning, they release weekly videos, maybe for a few weeks or a few months, they don't see immediate growth or traction and then they slow down, they burn out and they give up. So think about your first set of videos as an investment in the future for your business. Don't expect anything necessarily straight away. Have a plan in place, have a schedule and work continually chipping away at your content. Also, it's important to find a balance. If you're like me, then you probably have your day job I work as the head of video production for a company in London three days a week. I have my own freelance business, Kai Creative. I have my family too, so my wife and two children. And I'm trying to do this YouTube thing on the side as well. It's a lot of stuff to try and balance. And sometimes that means making a sacrifice on a little bit of sleep or watching Netflix movies. But you want to make sure that you do those important things first and then see where else you can buy out time from other things to work on your YouTube videos. Or if you're like me, then try and find a way to incorporate your family and friends into your videos. Finally, make sure that it's something that you enjoy doing. If you enjoy what you do, you will never work a day in your life. The same is true of YouTube as well. As soon as it becomes work, you won't enjoy doing it and you'll stop. So make videos about what you are passionate about and that will make it a lot easier to create regular content valuable content and grow on YouTube. So those are some of my plus points slash benefits of having a YouTube channel, especially if you are a creative type of person. But of course, these points can apply to those of you with different professions looking to get involved on the YouTube platform. So what about you guys? Are you thinking to start up a YouTube channel? And if so, what is it going to be about? And what is your plan going to be to create regular content? Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. If you found today's video useful, don't forget to give us a thumbs up and also share it with someone who might find it valuable. And if you haven't done so already, don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel and hit that little bell for notifications. So that's it from me today, guys. Thank you very much for watching. All that's left to say is stay creative, stay safe, imagine, implement and inspire. And I'll see you next time on Kai Creative.